Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for Hall of Fame sessions, how to make your UI UX portfolio stand out. I'm Peter Jervis with Alumni Relations. Before we introduce our amazing guests, we want to encourage you to use your real name so we can track attendance and potential GPS points. Also, feel free to connect with your peers in the chat box, but please keep it on topic and professional. Lastly, if you have any questions for our guests, please type in the question in the Q&A box and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. And this is a portfolio review. So if you have a portfolio that you would wish to review, please uh, submit the link into the Q&A box and we will bring it up and uh, go over it with you. So to announce uh, our guests, I want our first guest in this Hall of Fame session is a 2008 digital arts and design graduate. He's a senior software engineer and UX designer. Please welcome Mark Campbell. Howdy. <laughs> Our next guest is a 2009 graphic design and 2010 digital arts and design graduate. She's a product design manager at Capital One. Please welcome Full Sail University Hall of Fame inductee, Margaret Haig. Hi. Well, thank you for being here today. Um, yeah, let's just jump right into portfolio reviews. And I guess, where do you begin? Uh, yeah, I was just thinking about that. Um, so I was thinking about how I build my portfolio. Um, and if you want, if all of you don't mind, I'm going to share quickly and then I will pass it over to Mark. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little rundown of my Behance. Um, a lot of people, I guess it depends on what you want to do. If you want to build your own website or if you want to use something that's already out there, that's totally up to you. I will say um, when I look at portfolios, there is no, like when we get submissions um, as far as like, uh, you know, if you're applying for a position, it really doesn't matter. Like, I'm not judging you one way or another. It's kind of like the, the platform you use is fine with us. So when I think about what I want to put in my portfolio, I think about like what, what kind of position I want, you know, like who am I, what kind of designer do I want to be and what kind of job do I want to have? For me, I'm a huge advocate and lover of visual design. And it's what I want to do when I go into a job, even in the job I'm in now and the job I'll have after this. <laughs> That's just kind of something that I'm really attached to and something that is near and dear to my heart. So when I think about visual design as well, I don't think about it in one instance of like having a UI UX heavy portfolio or having like a heavy graphic design portfolio. So I'm essentially like in both worlds where I started out in like the graphic design space, um, but then I transitioned to the UI UX space. So what I try to do is showcase those skills over different mediums. So these like two projects here, um, these shook, well, actually these three, maybe four, maybe five. Uh, anyway, <laughs> there's a couple, I have a couple heavy hitters in like the UI and UX space. So this is stuff that's actually been live, um, you know, that's live, has had people, you know, interact with it. It's stuff that I can talk about. It's stuff that has metrics around it. You know, it's stuff that has like percentages. That's good stuff to have because those like real life metrics are good things to have. I know you won't have that yet. Um, you know, so you're starting out as a student, but it's okay. Like um, we'll probably walk through some, we're going to walk through some stuff. Um, we both found like two projects that we kind of go to annotate and say what's good um, about them or good or bad, or they could do better. So you'll have an idea of where to start. Um, let's see. This one is just a, this like UI a day thing is just a, an experiment. I I do because I really love doing experimental UI. So what I do is just kind of like create what I want to see. Um, and the good thing about these is you're still practicing your skills and you're kind of making it up as you go. And you kind of, you can put your interests in there. Like I'm not a huge pers person, but I love pink. So, you know, this is an opportunity for me to do those things. Um, you know, and you can go and you can create literally whatever you want, like a shopping experience. What does a news site look like? What does a travel thing look like? What does it look like if you want to stream some stuff, on, you know, online or on your phone? Um, you know, what it, would it be like to book a hotel? So this is the place where you can experiment and you can play. And essentially you can fail without like, you could, you know, you can fail and you can do stuff um, essentially without doing it in real life. You can fail like in a safe space, which I, I absolutely love. Um, there's still like some other stuff in here. Like I'm heavy in illustration. So I put, um, I, uh, feature some of my illustration skills. And then also, uh, I have this like ongoing music project that I love to do, um, which is 
my own interpretation of lyrics. So since I still love using InDesign, um, I just make these music lyric coasters. Um, so this is still stuff you can keep in your, your portfolio because it's showcasing your skills and essentially like your, um, uh, not variety, but like your scope of like what you as a person can do. So I'm going to stop sharing there and then I will hand it over to Mark. Okay, great. <clears throat> Um, the thing I'll add is that, you know, a lot of you as students, um, you know, you're probably having some anxiety, especially, you know, I want to get into UI, UX, um, but I don't think, you know, my, I don't have the chops for this. So I don't, it's not necessarily where I want it to be, you know, not, not even just what to put in my portfolio. I don't think what I'm putting in there is necessarily good enough. And uh, I, I want to emphasize to you guys that uh, it's, it's not so much your, the level of design you put in, but just how involved you are in the work. Um, you know, one of the examples that we're going to be able to show today, where it's just a lo-fi portfolio, um, but they're so detailed as far as like how they go about executing on it. It's very clear that they understand what they're doing. And in general, um, I'm more likely to hire that individual because of their level of competence going into the project. Um, and what you're going to find is when you graduate, this is one thing we all understand. Like I, I, there are people who graduate and they're just like, they're, 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 they're the hotness. They got it. And I was never one of those people. <laughs> Me either. Me either. <laughs> so like, you know, it's, it's okay that if you graduate, you know, you don't have the nicest portfolio. And I spent maybe the last four months, I mean, just really hammering at my portfolio. And then when I graduated, I spent another three months hammering away my portfolio and it still was not good enough. Um, I noticed because I've had recruiters saying, this is not good enough. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want you to know, you know, as we're going through this process, um, that it's okay uh, that you don't necessarily have it all down or you know, you finished a class and you want to still do it, but you don't necessarily feel that comfortable with it. Um, I just want you to know that, like, that's perfectly fine. Um, and, and hopefully uh, we can we are able to give you some insight today um, that will just go, OK, well, I know I'm I might not have all the chops, but at least I can go about the way I'm thinking about getting in the U.S., the way I'm thinking about putting together my portfolio. That's going to allow me to execute on my portfolio a lot better and more likely put me in a better position to get hired. Um, did we want to get started, uh, Margaret? Yeah, I think so. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to like put them in the chat so we are in the Q&A stuff so we can answer those for you and feel free to do that as we're talking. Um, we can stop and like answer stuff at any time. So if anyone has any right now, put them through. If not, we can have Mark share. All right. Um, so again, talking about, uh, I'm going to go through the lo-fi, uh, and one of the things that Margaret said that I want to hit on, uh, because, you know, she said she likes her portfolio is really centered around the visual because that's what she likes to do. Um, in my case, um, I'm a UX front end engineer, so I'm on the code side of the house. Uh, and so my portfolio isn't necessarily, uh, dedicated to, the way things are visually put together, I need to emphasize that I know how all the moving pieces work together. And therefore, you know, whenever I'm in front of client, now most of my work in the last 10 years has been like secret stuff. So it's like, I really can't show anybody anything. Um, but I can speak to, you know, a few of the websites that I have done where to just like, I'd say, hey, here's a link, go there. But I'm really in my portfolio when I do share, uh, I'm speaking to the business logic, I'm speaking to the code, uh, I'm speaking to, you know, I'm looking at, they're going to my GitHub. Um, that's where they're emphasizing on, on, in my case, because that's where I want to be. Um, so you got to think about where you want to be uh, in terms of UX and UI, because you got a lot of things that are involved in, you know, you, you got the stuff that's on the front end side of it, where you're on the front end design and you got the front end code side of it. And then you got the, the front end business logic side of it. So there's a lot of moving pieces and you kind of figure out where you want to fit in. And uh, emphasize that in your portfolio. Uh, again, whatever you emphasize is what they're going to want you for. Because uh, they'll say, hey, I remember your portfolio. You had a lot of stuff with some really awesome UML charts. We need you in on these meetings. And if you're not one of the guys that want to be doing UML charts for the next <laughs> four to five years, you know, make sure you put in your portfolio the stuff that you want to do and the things that you're passionate about. All right. So we're going to...
It looks like we do have a question. Um, so Andrew wants to know, is there a portfolio platform that you might recommend for a student? Um, and Mark brings up a good point about his, um, essentially his job, you know, like his focus is different than mine. So Mark, what, so for your focus, what do you think is the best platform to make a portfolio? GitHub. Um, I, I want to be able to, if, if, I'm, if I'm looking for a developer, I want that especially focused on front end, I need to be able to comb through the stuff that they've built. Um, and, you know, for some people, you can, you can post your, um, the websites you've worked on, but, you know, with so many frameworks out and all this stuff that's going on with web development, I, I generally, I want to see someone's GitHub. Um, and so when I'm interviewing, we'll, we'll do the code test and all that, and that'll let me know if they're proficient, but the GitHub will let me know, um, you know, it, it speaks to their passions and what they're building. Uh, so I want to see a GitHub. Um, so that's it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then Andrew, for me, it's a little bit um, different. So since I'm on the visual side, not so heavy on the UI side, like I could use something like Squarespace, um, but it costs money, you know, after your free trial. So I, I like as a student, I would probably, you know, if you don't want to pay any money, um, Behance is actually, it's free um, and it should come through your, it's connected to your Adobe account. So um, I would definitely use that. Um, they already have it set up that you can create a project and they have tons of templates for creating projects. And you can actually just make like, honestly, the, um, the layout can be from like here to like Wisconsin, you know, like really, really long. And you can essentially just get the dimensions and upload it to Behance and you have a project ready. Absolutely. Um, all right, so let's go through this. UI case study. Um, so, and I'm thinking about in reference of, you know, if I'm interviewing, so if I'm in the interview process and I'm, I'm looking at someone and we're looking to hire someone, uh, I want to understand, and this is not necessarily highlighting a bunch of projects. And I, I know, you know, when you graduate, you don't have a lot of work to show. Um, if you can give me one really good project that you're super detailed in, I, I really, I, I just care about that. Like you show me one thing that you did really well um, versus five or six different things that are just average. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to lean towards the one thing that was really well. You know, I think there's like a quote by Bruce Lee. It's like, I'm not scared of the guy that knows 500 different kicks. I'm scared of the guy that knows one kick that he practiced 500 times. You know, so <laughs> uh, that's the way I look at this. So, you know, execute on one thing really well. Um, so or if we go to like they're talking about the, the, the business process, how they go about thinking about it. And you have projects throughout the uh, time at Full Sail where you're going to have time to have an actual client and you can take some extra time uh, from that class and go, OK, here's a client. Let me build a chart around that. OK, this is the client that we had to work with. Let me build something around that. Here's a process that we went through. You can kind of build processes around it. This is super I mean, nothing, nothing here that takes a lot of effort. Um, so you can go through this process. And for me, I'm thinking, okay, this person is really going through a process to building this product. And I'm getting kind of like to see that. Um, so you want to show, you want to show the process. You're really kind of developing that story. So you really want to show your process. Uh, and by the way, all this stuff is going to be shareable. So I'm going to share this in the, in the Q and A so you can see uh, what we use and what we talk about here. Um, so you want to show your process doesn't take a lot of effort, um, but at least speak to it. Uh, and for you as the, the creator of that, you know, of your UX, it, it speaks to, once you're telling me, hey, here's the process that I went through, it kind of breaks down how you're thinking about displaying everything as well. Um, you know, your discovery stage, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't think you actually need a discovery stage in there, especially when you're starting out. Um, there's only so much you know at the very beginning, uh, getting into the industry. So talking about a discovery process it isn't really necessary. Um, so it's not really required. Um, as you've gotten more experience and the projects, you know, they, they will look more and more amazing. Uh, you might have to be detailed about what you did about going to get to that point. Um, that, that way, because you don't want them to miss it. You don't want to be uh, you don't want it to be an oversight for anyone. Um, <clears throat> again, you don't have to talk about the strategy. Uh, you talk to um, what platforms you were using, the type of research. Here's the part that's important. I think that gets missed a lot is the research. Um, I've seen a lot of students, because I'm also on the, uh, the Slack channel. 
uh, for the online courses for um, the 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 web uh, the web degree program. And what I've seen a lot of students do uh, is you'll post your uh, your your work for feedback, and you'll get some feedback for it. But the thing that I'm always missing is how did you get to the point of developing that UI? You'll post your UI from whatever class you're in, but I always get the missing part of how did we get here? What's the story? Because you have like this event thing that you do. There's, there's one particular project for an event that you have to create a, a UX for. Um, and so you create this event, but I never know. And anytime I've ever left feedback for students is always, how did you get here? What, how did you know this customer even wanted this thing? So in the research part, you got to tell me, how did you even get to the point of telling me that this is the customer that's going to use this thing? So I want to understand how, how, how did you get to the point of understanding who the customer is? All right. Uh, so I want to know how you understand who the customer is. Because a lot of times you guys will put something and it comes from a, from a reference of, well, I really like this design thing and I wanted to try it out. But did you actually understand if your customer liked it? Right. So take the time to understand how did you get to the point of understanding who the customer is? If I see that in a portfolio, I mean, that that's like automatic brownie points. You, you, you're making a customer focus. Right. So I want to understand who the customer is. Great. Here they posted, I actually asked some Google questions. I have never seen it, but if by chance I see this in the in a full in the full sales Slack channel where you're posting the results before you got to the UI, um, but you're posting some questions. Hey, I asked a couple of people that kind of fit the, the target demographic, and I kind of got some feedback from them before I even posted the. You post that, I'm like, I'm in your DM <laughs> trying to figure out who you are. I'm like, can I mentor you? Can I help you in any way, shape, or form? Like, I want to help you. Um, but this is the kind of stuff you want to see. Um, and it, again, this is not uh, about having the best visual design, right? I, I want to know that you're putting in the work before the work. Um, and so when I see stuff like this, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is, for me, this is a separator. And how much work does this take? This is a screenshot from Google Forms. Um, so it doesn't take a lot of effort or work that goes into it. This is something really small that you can do. And it's not like you need a bunch of feedback. I mean, I know this thing says 95 responses, but if you got five people, you ask a couple questions and you got five people to respond, that lets me know you're doing market research uh, before you even got to UX. So for me, that's huge. Um, so show me, show me your work, show me your market. It's not my dog. Sorry. <laughs> Take a fine time. Um, and then, you know, as I'm in tech, and I, I've started, um, you know, I've, I'm in, in the tech industry as well. Um, and I, I'm an advisor for a VC company out in the, in the Baltimore area. Um, and so one of the funny things that we always have a conversation about is when a new company comes around and they say, you know, I have no, com I have no competitors. This is absolutely unique. And you want to understand the landscape of the thing that you're building. Who else is like you? Um, again, going back to what I'm seeing in the Slack channel, um, a lot of times you guys take the take of, let me build something absolutely unique, but it's not really based on any standards or anything. Like what are the current practices? Again, if you understand the customer, you know they have habits. Well, what kind of apps are they using? And you don't really deviate too far from what they're currently using. So again, something super simple, who's already in the space, right? Just showing me you understand like who's there. Uh, and a lot of stuff you don't really have to get into. Um, again, here's the customer persona. At the end of that, you, you've built this customer persona. Get a picture of her, right? Go on iStock or whatever, Google search. I know you're students, so you take the free option. Go to Google search, <laughs> find a picture of whoever the customer is and just make this up. This right here, this is like a money slide. Very little effort is involved in this slide, but it's a money slide. Just showing me the customer. Um, that lets me know, you know, who they are, you know, what devices they're using, you know, you, you kind of have a summary of this person. And then we can get into, 
once you've shown me the customer, and again, you don't have to go super details. This is it can this can be like the limit of it. This is the customer. And then we can go into, oh, okay, now that we've done the research, we've gotten here, now we can get into what is the app? Um, so we got the you, you can show you a mail charts. If you did a card sorting activity, I know Margaret, I know uh, she does that at Capital One when she was working on another app. You know, they have the card sorting activity. So there's activities. Um, that are UX activities that are involved in into building something that don't necessarily involve design. But do we speak on it? No. I mean, but if you're in an interview and you say, hey, I've done these these exercises, I do these exercises for a company go, oh, you're already doing those kind of exercises. I think you might fit in to what we're doing here because you're doing these kind of exercises. So don't just speak on your skills. I mean, uh, or show your skills, but speak on these things that are that are, you can use to develop your skills. Uh, I know I've seen a lot of resumes where, you know, they'll just talk about their experience or very little experience that they've had, but they won't speak on the things that they're doing to the, develop themselves. And I said, that's absolutely important to speak on what you're doing to develop yourself. So if you're going to put in your portfolio, speak on these activities that you're taking to develop your skills. I think that's critical to speak on the activities that you take to develop your skills as well. Um, Margaret, did you want to add anything there? I'm trying to get this dog to stop working. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, uh, I think I was interested in what um, what this person, um, what their title is, what they want to do. So this is everything you know that's happening leading up into like up into this is the front end. Uh, or essentially the back end of making, you know, uh, like the, essentially like the wireframe and then the UI and stitching all that stuff together. So this is all that I'm, I'm sure a bunch of you know, because you're learning that stuff in school, but depending on where your, your journey is in that, um, in your degree. Um, so this is a bunch of the stuff that leads up to, um, you know, the stuff that I'm talking about that I will talk about on my end. Um. And yeah, and, and I'm and I'm just really just speaking on to you know it's okay to just like add this kind of stuff in your absolutely. And if you are somebody who comes out and you want to do like UX research or you want to be more on the UX side, like the the heavier side of this back end stuff, this is a great way to display all of all of the work that you um that you have to show. Um, and again, it you're you're starting you know in the design stage, you're 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 literally yeah. starting as simple as working in your sketchbook. Uh, and I, I don't know if it's still true, but I know as a student, um, for me, people really hated their sketchbooks. <laughs> you know, they wanted to get in Photoshop, they wanted to get an illustrator, and they wanted to get right to it. But the real work starts like right here in the sketchbooks. Um, you're pulling out a notepad or whatever it is for you. Uh, I know like for me at my desk, I don't have space for that. So I, I literally, I have like a tiny sketchbook. It's probably somewhere around here with all this junk. But <laughs> I have a tiny sketchbook and literally when the idea pops in my head or we have a meeting and they say, hey, we got to develop this feature, I literally open up sketchbook and like just write something down. I'll scan it in uh, and then we'll talk about it. So the design process usually starts with a pen and a piece of paper. Um, and so, again, I wouldn't necessarily emphasize that. I, I would make it more structured as they would here. You know, you see like it's structured uh, from one action to the next. Uh, so, you know, this is like a, this is the lo-fi wireframe. Uh, so instead of like going through a technical wireframe, like in balsamic or something, uh, you have like this lo-fi wireframe uh, that you're running through, uh, which goes through actions or a story um, for that particular user. Uh, and then you get into the hi-fi. Um, so I would make sure in your portfolio, if you could emphasize lo-fi, emphasize hi-fi, and again, it doesn't take a lot of work. It's a pen and a piece of paper. I see something in the Q and A. Someone posted something. And you can also, um, I think there's an app. And then you can also, if you upload these images, um, I don't know if y'all have an Envision account, a Vision Envision account, or even if you take these static images and you can put them in XD because I know y'all use the the Creative Cloud. You can actually prototype um, your paper forms and then have people touch them and test them. And you can also use that. Like if you export the prototype um, from Adobe XD, you'd be able to then like embed something like that in here. Um, or you can, you know, use After Effects and you can simulate the animation of this going through the screens. 
Um, here's the part that I, I think a lot of people missing. And, and I think it, it'll be a great point in an interview to talk through um, testing different parts of your experience. I know when I'm going through what you guys are sharing on Slack, um, one of the things I see, it's always perfect case scenario. Every time I see something, something's perfect. You have a, a text box that is meant to fit 12 characters and 12 characters only. <laughs> and so I think to myself, I'm like, as a, as a person who's like looking to hire somebody, I was like, well, what if I got someone whose name has, has 35 characters in it? How, how's, this, how's this box fit that individual? And so being able to talk through testing different types of scenarios, again, you can simplify it into one thing. But if you really fine tune that one thing and emphasize it, again, that's the five, just doing the, the one kick 500 times. So you want to emphasize one thing that you can do really well. And so testing is a part of it. Um, showing me that you can put your design through different scenarios and how it works with different scenarios. So I want to know not just the default state of your application when you share your XD stuff or whatever you're sharing in the test. I want to know what happens when you get an error. I want to see the error state. I want to know what happens when, you know, the overflow goes way over the flow. Um, I, I want to know what happens when I don't put in a valid password. Uh, I want to know what happens when I hit the action button and I put my email in um, to sign up for your event. What do I immediately see next as the customer? So I want to know that, that you're thinking about that kind of thing in the experience for the customer. Because uh, when I see that, it's not just about showing me some cool looking poster. I mean, otherwise, I feel like it's more of a, if you're just showing me the one visual thing. Uh, and again, because you're a student, it comes off, you know, in, for, for most of us, it comes off as student work. So show me that you're thinking about the mm -hmm. flow of the process and not just the poster image of the, all the things you like. Show me that you're thinking about the flow of the process. Again, also something that just to go from one part to just 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. It's not, it doesn't take a super lot of effort. Uh, and then, but it goes long. So it goes long ways, but it doesn't take a lot of effort. And so those are my tips for you. Just adding the different parts of the process that don't take a lot of effort and allows you to emphasize your work a lot better. Um, and so hopefully that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and add it. And I'm going to go ahead and add this to the chat so everyone can see that. Uh, and, and, you know, again, anything, just, just let me know, um, Margaret, go ahead and take on over. Okay. Uh, someone asks, is there an ideal level of detail, uh, for each project? If I had to prioritize different parts of the process, what would be the top three okay. things I want to see? That's a good one. Go for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you know, part of what we said earlier is, you know, what, what where do you want to fit in, in the process? Um, so what I say, is there an ideal level of detail? Not so much. I mean, it, it you, you're really going to emphasize the detail on where you want to fit in. If you want to fit in on the visual side of it, then you're going to spend a lot of the details going to be on that visual side. Um, and you kind of, you show the process, but you emphasize the final product. Um, and so wherever you want to focus is where you will emphasize. Um, so, you know, I, I don't necessarily think there's like a top three things you, I would want to see. Um, I, I just want to see a flow. So show me a flow. Um, let me know that your portfolio has a flow to it. Uh, and I think that goes a long way. And then at the end, I can say, oh, you, here's where you're passionate about. Because once we've gotten, once we've gone through this flow of things and I got into your passion, uh, it's going to it's going to show through regardless. Uh, and again, it makes the interview process a lot easier if you can make it more of a, a flow feel um, because you're not nervous about the interview. I mean, you're talking about what you like to do. Um, so it, it kind of takes the nerves away from it. And it doesn't really feel like a test. You don't want your interview to feel like a test. You know, it's, it's really it's a conversation. Um, usually those are the most successful interviews. So when you know you're having a conversation on the other side. Um, if you were asking me the top three things you'd want to see, um, so I'm, uh, I think this isn't a gripe, um, <laughs> cause Mark makes great points on like who you want to be. 
But if you want to be a designer that's doing production things, um, your, your portfolio, like a project will need to have a balance. Um, so I want to see the visuals as the show off, like what it, like the visual thing is the thing that attracts me. Like it should be the thing that's the, like the, you know, the hero part, the top of the page. Like I want to see that wow factor. And then, you know, it's like, Hey, you show me like a little, a little bit, it's like an album cover, you know? And then I'm like, Oh, okay. Now I'm going to go and like immerse myself in the rest of this music. Um, so I'm going to go through the playlist of this album. It's, it's essentially like that. So you're like giving me a beginning, um, and then walking me through the process. And while you're doing that, you're also including visuals in that. So like while you're telling the story um, from beginning to end, as as far as your process is concerned, I usually like to see um, like UI elements um, with that. Um, so stuff that is visual. I will admit if there's a lot of text, I just scroll, scroll, scroll. Um, <laughs> if it's at the bottom, like I'm scrolling to the bottom and I'm trying to look for the visual thing and I look <laughs> at that and then I go back and I skim. I do not if you have like six paragraphs of text, I guarantee you we are not reading that. Um, we may skip it a little bit. So save yourself some time and energy <laughs> and make it short and concise. All right, so, uh, oh, somebody, can I use this platform for an invention? Ooh. Yeah, I would say so. I would say you'd be able to use the same process of storytelling, um, like forming, you know, like what the problem is, you know, like what was your problem? And then essentially like, how did you solve that problem? Mark, what do you think? Yeah. Um, I mean, look, I, I, I use this stuff for creating applications. So, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I typically go, and I, I'm not sure if that, that question was specific to the, the platform I'm using annotate or was like the process, um, but uh, I'll speak to the process. Um, I'm typically going about it the same way. Um, I, I don't, I, I prefer not to write code, you know, if I don't have to. And, you know, writing code, even though I am the engineer, writing code is my last step. Um, and it's the last thing I have to do. So, you know, I'm emphasizing the process, the process. And when I advise people who are, you know, um, you know, because I advise a few other folks who are running small businesses. Um, when I'm advising them, I'm telling them the same thing. Like before you execute, um, figure out what this process is, figure out what your customer looks like, go through all these exercises before you ever execute on the process. Just because, you know, once you've done that, it's it's less stress on how to get there. And, you know, it's more emphasis on, uh, you know, how to manage all the people that are coming along because you've you've made that a process and you've made it this story that you put together. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna hop into something here. One second. Yeah. Um, so I did some annotating of this thing, but I didn't finish it. So my apologies there. Um, so we'll walk a little bit through this. I just can't anything up. Sorry. I was doing it live. <laughs> 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 All right. So this is, this is another project on Behance, um, that I found. And so this is a little bit of what I was talking about earlier. So like right away, I'm like met with minimal text, um, which is something I talked about here. Um, so I said like a title and a short description are a must, like we don't take the time, the time to read long paragraphs of text. Um, and that's real. Uh, I know, my life is a little bit different at Capital One. I'm jumping sometimes, some days, meeting to meeting to meeting for all eight hours. Other days I have large blocks of time, but usually my time is really, really valuable. Um, so keep it concise. Um, and I love this thing. Um, so showing a full shot of the interface. This is essentially setting me up. So it's like, hey, this is a full shot of the interface, but it's like in the rest of the project, I'm going to break this interface down and talk about it in more detail. So if we go to the second section here, um, this is a great way if you have some like micro interaction or like, you know, animation skills, this is a perfect place to showcase those as well. Um, so like often accompanying like being uh, like they call them interaction designers. Um, so it's interesting. We have like little pockets of who we are in different, yeah, <laughs> right? in different titles. Um, but anyway, there's there's a, a ton of ways to say this. You can also be a UI designer and have interaction skills. So this is a great way to showcase that animation stuff. And it's also a really cool way to like show me a focused view of the UI. So like this is essentially 
how, so this is a, so this is an app for like doc, like a way to track doctors who are visiting patients at home. Right. So if I'm the person who's on the other end of this, essentially like you and I, as like people, if we didn't work on this, we don't know how everything looks and how everything flows and what it's going to look like on each side of this. So this is a great way without us having to like be a doctor, you know, like be able to see how this experience would actually work, um, which is pretty cool. And like Mark was calling out earlier when you're talking about the different facets of the journey, right? So there's like, there's the happy path and then there's kind of like a medium path. And then the, the unhappy path is like in stuff that fails or there's different states of things, you know, there's like hover states for things. There's disabled states of these stuff that you never see, you know, but this is a really cool way. Like if we look right here, Oh, sorry. Number four. Um, so at number four, they put the little color code down there. So anytime one of these status changes, you know, like these will, these things will pop up and essentially what he's showing, or I'm sorry, what they are showing right here is these are all green, green where they're all blue and then they turn green, but we know that's not perfect. Right. So down here is where they're showcasing what those other statuses could be great way to do it yeah and then here uh i thought this was pretty cool too so they're taking like a there's like essentially a calendar and now they're taking a focused view on what that looks like when you click on one appointment um so they're like this is what happens when i'm going to this appointment and what does it look like when i'm interacting with them you know and so you know this is Teresa, and you're going to visit her and this is her age and this is what is going on with her which i thought was a really neat way to show how you can essentially like pull a detailed card or like a profile card for each patient. And then if we zoom out a little bit, um, another thing that Mark was talking about as well, like talking about designing for mins and maxes. Um, so that's, that's a great way to like try something. It's like, yeah, something might be three letters when you're thinking about it, but you know, the fact is that something could be really long. Um, and something we used to do at USA today, I forget, there is a city in Arizona, which is the longest name um, that's out there, uh, and it's called Truth or Consequences. And so we would start out designing and anything that would, could fit, you know, truth and consequences, we knew we were going to like, you know, be solid on that. So, you know, essentially just try to like, okay, what's my minimum? What's my maximum? That way, you know, like where, how you can play with stuff or like what anything would look like, like how big, essentially like how big does, how long does this card have to be, you know? And like, if somebody has a name that's like, you know, there's six names attached, like, okay, at some point we might have to truncate this a little bit, which is a decision you can make. Can I get enough information before I can kind of like start to shorten things? Um, but this, uh, this as well is also a cool way. So I know we talked about a little bit above the different statuses of like, when I go and visit, um, each of these patients as a doctor, but how these are set up in the calendar is pretty cool too. So, they, they essentially take that same experience on the map view and put it in the calendar view. So it's, it's the same information, you know, in two different ways, which is pretty neat. Um, let's see what else. Um, so they kind of, they kind of dig into, so the other one being, um, the web part, you know, like the stuff that maybe exists on a desktop or something that you're accessing on your iPad. Like this is a great way to showcase like that you're a responsive designer as well. So you can not only design for web, but you can design for mobile. Um, and what does that look like? Are you designing a native experience as well? So is a website and a native experience? And that's something that you have um, experience with. Like this is a great place to do that because it's essentially one project and you can show like your versatility as a designer that way. Um, so they essentially take the same information they spotlighted us with um, in the beginning and they've kind of rearranged it. So now we have this like, before we had an animated view, but now we're seeing static views, you know, so we can, if I want to dig deeper or see more information on this, like, this is a great place to do that. Um, I just, yeah, I all around thought this was like an amazing project. Um, it, <laughs> um, you know, it, it kind of like, it's a little bit, so like Mark showed you one that was like on a, on a different end, you know, and this one is kind of like the extreme of that other spectrum. Like if you really want to showcase like, the interface and your interaction skills, like this is how you would do it. There's usually, you know, I'm like, I was trying to find a portfolio, like a project earlier, because I found one not that long ago, that was the perfect balance of like, UX ness you know, like framing the problem, talking about research and everything. Um, and it had it, it, like it also accompanied visuals with it, which it was like, literally the perfect balance. So I know, like we showed you extremes. 
But if you want to be someone who's like involved in all of the process, you can essentially take these two extremes and like meet in the middle. You know, one of the things I really liked about uh, going through this project is that you take your interface, this, this large interface, and, you know, what they were able to do successfully is just break out different pieces of the interface and focus on it. Um, so you don't necessarily have to just, you know, posting your portfolio, here's my one project and I have like this one flat long file. I mean, you're, you're literally taking these pieces and you're zooming in on it. Mm -hmm. And you're showing the, the detail there and we're talking to the detail. So you, you don't necessarily think about, oh, I have to have, I only have eight slides for my phone interface uh, and I need to go develop 16 slides. No, take that slide of the, the intro page and like, let's drill in to what you did. Uh, and I think they did a great job of executing that here. Absolutely, 100%. Um, uh, Mac had a question. Hey, Mac, how are you doing? I ain't seen you in a while. I've never been down there. Um, ideal world, how much time would you allocate to development before going into production or coding? I wonder if we mean development, like building it before you push it to code? Or... I think that's what he's talking about. I mean, because it's like before you go into production, which maybe okay. slash coding. So. What, what is the time that goes into that? I mean, I, I think you can really speak to that as far as like, you know, because I don't see it until the end. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> before, okay. Um, you said he's thinking, you think he's talking about coding? Oh, wait, before we go into coding. Okay. Um, it depends on the level, um, the level of, um, the level of the project, like what's the scope for it? Um, so most, I guess like in the fall, I got something. I'm somebody who like loves to get something, get, my hands dirty for like a couple weeks. And then, I mean, I've done stuff that's literally been done in two weeks and then it's pushed to production two weeks later. Um, so it just depends on like, honestly, the, sometimes the availability of the tech team will be like, the, the tech team has one month to have this available in two months. And you're like, all right, let's get to it. And so you have two months to like get everything, you know, do all like the, the research, um, you know, come up with some ideation, do some user testing, go around a little bit, talk to the tech team, do the level of effort stuff, the planning, and then boom, it's off, you know? Um, and then there's other times where things will take about a year. Um, so if you're asking like in an ideal world, how much time would you allocate? I always feel like too much time is too much time. Um, you know, like essentially you could, like, if you gave me if you gave me a problem statement and asked me to come up with a bunch of solutions in one workday, I would probably come up with the same amount of solutions if you gave me two weeks. And I'm not kidding. So <laughs> me, less time is better. Um, some other people would probably like a little bit more time to dig into the research a little bit more um, because you have to start testing on something too, right? Yeah, um, that's good. Yeah, we... Hmm, because you have to start testing on something too. Do you know what that means? Uh, no, not really. There's a couple of different ways you can test. So you can like do user testing, which is actually like having people, you know, like test the thing before. Make sure you get it to like a really good place before you push it to production. And then there's a thing that Amazon loves to do on all of you, all of us, all the time, which is they're consistently A-B testing us. They're testing two different options on all of the shoppers at any given moment. Um, so that's another thing, you know, like you can do like live tests on people. So you have like a set group of like 1000 customers and you're like, we're trying to figure out which one is more successful. You can do that. Um, and there's also, I'm sure y'all are familiar with a little beta tag. So like, we just want to open community of people to come in and test this out for us and give us feedback. And so there's, there's essentially like a disclaimer, like, we put this beta tag on it because we know it's not perfect and you want to tell it, we want you to tell us how much this thing sucks, you know, before we actually release it to the majority of the public. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think the, the one thing you, de you definitely hit the nail on the head there. Like it, it's, it, a lot of times it boils down to tech resources. Um, and a lot of the tech resources kind of boils down to budget. Um, you know, I, I remember my time at, uh, in an agency at Wonderman, um, you know, we can have a Pfizer project that, that goes for six months, or, you know, we can have a, a Pfizer project that goes for three months. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it really kind of depends on the resources. And so it's funny. It's like, you tell, if you tell the, 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 the UI team or, or the, the, the team that we're doing a lot, most of the, the UX work, you tell these guys that, Hey, it's six months. Well, they're going to do the same level of work 
in six months that they would in three months. And uh, it's really crazy. Um, I mean, maybe everyone's more tired at the process in three months than they are at six, but <laughs> you're still going to get the same level of work in. And so I, I think what's great, um, and, you know, Full Sail is preparing you for that now is that, you know, there are going to be times where you're working and, you know, they, they say we need this tomorrow. And, you know, you're like, I had this same level of work and it, I had to do it in a month in full sale. And you tell me you need this same level of work that I took me a month. Now I have to do it tomorrow. Um, you are going to see that uh, as you get into the industry. And so, you know, get used to it now um, because it's going to happen. You know, you're going to get you're going to get timelines that are great and you're going to get timelines that absolutely suck. Um, I think a part of getting to that senior level and really developing your skills um, it's just getting used to those different time frames that you're going to have to deal with because you will have to deal with them. Uh, if you don't, then, you know, I, I can honestly say there probably won't be any growth in that process, but you're going to grow a lot from that process and you're going to have to deal with different timelines, different aspects, different level of details. Um, and it's just going to come at you. Um, just be ready for it. I know for us as experienced professionals, like, you know, at, at you know, at, at a senior level, like when we see new people coming in, we know they're not expecting it. Um, and so if you don't, it, it's not like you're, you're, you're in a situation where like you have to succeed. Like we're no, there's going to be some shortcomings. There's going to be some failure involved. It's just important that you take on the challenge and do it. And, you know, we can help you grow from that process as you've gotten that experience. So, you know, take it head on, uh, and, you know, be okay with things not working out because they won't always work out, you know? I mean, I've had things work out where, you know, I've gotten some good mentorship behind it and I've had things that didn't work out and I've gotten fired behind it. So <laughs> just got to know it's just part of the way things work. It, it just be ready for it. So, you know, it's it's fun, though. It's fun. It's fun. Um, so we have two really, really good questions. I'm sorry. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Chantanel. Oh, I hope I, I hope I got that right. Um so what type of mental health exercises do you utilize for overcoming adversity? This is a really good question. Um, i trying to think. I recently got in, oh, I got it right. That's great. Um, so I recently got, I like maybe a couple of weeks ago, signed up for a TikTok account, not because I want to post anything and not because I want to follow any of my friends. I was just like, I'm going to see what this thing is all about. I like, you would not believe the amount of like positivity and like mental health stability things that I found on there. Even someone who just like records sounds at like a certain kilohertz. Um, so I actually like begin my day by like listening to his sounds and I feel like it like mellows me out, you know, it like kind of puts me in a really new, like calmer headspace. Um, but there, I will say there's, there's a phrase that they've coined for me, which is going zero to Margaret, which is just kind of a thing I do <laughs> pretty like even keeled, you know, like me most of the time, like in a good mood, but when somebody like flips the switch and gets me on, you know, I go, well, like, I mean, one time in a meeting, I was like, then why the fuck are we doing the test? You know? Cause like somebody just hit me to my max and I was just like, man, you know, and like, I come back and I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you know, like I did not mean to do that, but it's just like when somebody takes me to the thing, but you're right. Um, so they're and working from home is, is kind of stressful sometimes, you know, cause we're consistently sitting behind here. Communication isn't exactly like communication without body language over Slack. You know, it's like over text. It's like, it's hard to decipher. What do they mean? What do they not mean? Um, sometimes just asking, like asking, honestly, what do you mean by that? If something isn't clarifying. Um, but as far as like mental health stuff, uh, I drink a lot of water because it helps me take a lot of breaks. It physically gets me up and walking away from my desk and also breaking that if you're stuck in a rut, like kind of thing, like breaking the molds of that. So Mark, what would you say? Um, I, I've seen, I've, I've gotten, sometimes I just get stuck. <laughs> And uh, it just doesn't really work out. But, um, you know, what I've done, because uh, I, I mean, I take on a lot. And uh, I can honestly say, I, I just talk about meltdowns. Though, like I've had them in the meetings over the last year and there was no apologizing after. <laughs> so I might want to go back and check on some folks. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's for me, it's finding a balance. I have to turn it off. Like I, I have to have, like for me, Tuesday and Thursday are like my turn off days um, where I, I won't do anything. 
Uh, I mean, I'll work right for a while, yeah. but like after that, I, I will not do anything. Uh, and I, I think as students, or and I, and I spoke about this in like a, a full sale um, clubhouse thing. Um, I think as students, one of the things that we've like emphasized because of the schedule, like we've gotten so used to just being in this work, work, work mode. Uh, and then we hear these talks and you go like, you go from work, work, work mode to like, I got to advance, I got to improve, I got to constantly be striving. And, you know, no one sleeps. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, sleeping <laughs> is actually good for you. It makes you productive. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I have times where I, I turn off and I don't do anything. I'm not focused on, you know, improving at being better at what I do. I mean, I love what I do. I don't love what I do any less because I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I turn it off and, and it helps me recenter myself. And when I come back, you know, I'm able to be more productive because I've, I've like had that turn off time. Um, now, right now, it's just like every, the Tuesday and Thursday because I, I can't do it multiple days in a row because I'm just addicted to abusing myself in that way. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you bring up a good point about sleep. Um, I actually like when I started going to full sale, I got really into fitness. Um, I ended up joining Planet Fitness because it's dirt cheap you know, um, essentially, but I started out with cardio, then got really interested in weightlifting. And then I like at another point was like really into P90X, but like that stress relief, you know, was like something I needed, you know, like five days a week. And you were talking about no sleeping and as well, I was like, I think trying to balance the sleeping, the work, and then making time for yourself. I think what we've understood over the past, like, you know, pandemic life is that time for yourself is really, really important. Self-care is really, really important. And if you aren't good, you know, like if you aren't good in here, up here in your gut, you know, like eating the good food, um, not that you can't have pizza, you know, um, but like just taking care of yourself, like you're going to be here, you're going to be more alert and excited and, um, engaged. And what do you say? Like, like no one's gonna, (laughs) it's like not going to matter if you're not around, you know? So like, take care of you first, um, which is good. And I feel a lot of companies now like are on board, you know, like it used to be like, Oh, like American way, like hustling. That's how you get everything. But it's like, no, actually like we need to like prolong our lives and take care of ourselves. Um, you know, so there's like, there's a lot of companies who like take a lot of that and put it into, you know, I was like at this Seattle interactive conference before this whole thing happened. And, um, the woman that works at Lulu, I think she was like a creative director of Lululemon. Like, I mean, what a company to work for. They were like, yeah, we have like yoga class at work every day. I'm like, dude, that would be amazing. Like I want to work somewhere who's like, everybody come on, shut down for an hour and do something together. That's going to help your body and your mind. Right. You know, I'll, I'll say this last thing before we uh, go to the next question. Um, it's uh, we, we've emphasized so much on, I, I remember myself as a student, and, you know, my emphasis, my emphasis so much was on just like getting better and getting better. Uh, I mean, for me, I spent 16 hours a day, um, five days a week at full sale. Um, and that, that's legit 16 hours. I was at full sale. I was opening labs. If I wasn't opening a lab. I was in somebody else's lab. I was in my lab. I was in Margaret's lab. You know, I was in everyone's <laughs> lab. So you always saw me. There was never a time you went to was like, does this guy go home? And you know, I was there so much and my goal was just try to get better. And when I graduated, you know, I'm still being t- someone who was there 16 hours a day for over a year and some change. And at the end of the day, when I graduated, I was still being told I wasn't good enough. And so I spent so much time emphasizing getting better. I didn't t- take the time to try to find a balance there and, and figuring out when I took the time to step away and find a balance. I feel like I've improved at my skill set so much more when there's a balance versus just like me trying to do a brute force. Cause then I can allow other people into my life and, and also be um, a, a aid to me because I, they're, they're pouring into me as well. And it's not just me trying to brute force it. And so as a student, I would, I would say, you know, if you have, if you're not doing it, you know, collaborate with other people who are in the program with, these are people who are going through it with you. These are people who are going to be there when you graduate. These are people who are going to be working in industry with you. Talk to each other. Um, and cause you guys are going to still be talking when it's over and, you know, there's going to be work that comes out of it. So, you know, I, I would definitely emphasize having that community. 
Absolutely. And we have like three minutes left. Um, I know we have a, another question from Andrew and Sean. Okay. Wait, when do you say no to on a project or if you get stuck on a project, what are some of the things you guys do to push through? Um, you know what, Mark, I'm going to let you pick which one we want to answer. Um, just saying no things are really fast. I, I could even say no thing. <laughs> okay. Hit that one. And then I could probably hit the other one. Right. <laughs> um, you say no when it doesn't work for you. Um, if, if, if you have to wonder whether or not, and, and here's, I, I would say, here's like the bridge. If it makes you uncomfortable, but you feel like you're going to grow from it, do it. Um, if it makes you uncomfortable and you feel like there's nothing to gain from it, walk away from it. If there, if, if you, if there's nothing to gain from it for you and it's not going to benef, benefit you or anyone else, uh, you're not going to learn through the experience. Um, and it's going to put you in a place where you don't want to be say no if you start something and it's going horrible you got the client from hell and you're like i gotta get this check the final check for 500 bucks walk away from the money i mm -hmm. promise you it, it's not worth it because once you got the 500 you're feeling miserable you hate the individual you're talking bad about the individual don't even waste the time i i can't tell you how many times i've i've gone through that point where i just like you know what it's a thousand dollars but it's, it's, it's $5,000 worth of headache. So <laughs> I'm not taking it. Even if it was $5,000, this isn't for me. So you got to recognize what's not for you and walk away. No matter what money is on the line, the money should not be the indicator for whether or not you're going to do the work. You know, what you're going to gain from it, the experience, how you feel, let that be the emphasis. All right. <laughs> Good job. Record time. All right. Um, so Andrew, <laughs> If you get stuck on a project, what are the, some of the things you can do to push through that problem? Honestly, walking away. Um, if you're stuck, like if I'm stuck pushing for like an hour and I'm pushing these pixels back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and nothing's working and I've looked at inspiration and I'm trying and trying and it's not, I'm not feeling it, you know, like I get up, I walk away, I take a walk, I eat a cheeseburger, you know, like anything, like anything to get me out, like essentially like breaking the stuckness, walking away sometimes it honestly takes the rest of the day. Like I have to go like do some other stuff that I'm working on. And then I come back the next day and I'm like, somehow like there will be a click moment. There will be a moment where like, it's like literally you've taken all the inspiration and all the tries and all that stuff. And like your brain absorbs it. And it was like, what's the best thing. And then all of the stuff just starts coming together. So sometimes it's just about doing the research, trying it out letting your brain kind of like subconsciously work through it and then coming back and getting into it. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for doing this, Mark. This is actually the first time we've got to hang out. So I'm so great hearing with and you know, talking with you and, and learning from you. Margaret, you're always the reason why I wear pink. Um, hey. so. Me too. Awesome. <laughs> um, but I also want to thank everybody who attended today. You guys are amazing. Uh, stay in touch. Um, guys, thank you. And we'll have a great afternoon. And I guess you have another session at three o'clock, right? Uh, we do. Yeah. So we're doing like a little interview ideation session, which should be pretty fun. Um, so anyone like feel free to keep in contact with Mark and I um, hit us up on, you know, all the networks. Um, I'm pretty sure we both just use our names. So um, we'll see you later. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Mark. Great Thank day. You. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.